Hello everyone, welcome to the video today. We are going to look at Azure Kubernetes services and this is a topic that is definitely covered under 303304 uh, Azure exams and also if you are uh, working on 500 this lab uh, would be useful. What we are going to do, we are going to deploy Azure Kubernetes services within the portal and then we're going to get uh, one of the quick start labs or quick start application a voting application and we'll take that and we'll deploy that inside uh, some containers okay so first of all we'll do some reading of azure kubernetes services what it what, what it can do for you but really uh, the aks which is the short form is the container orchestration tool it simplifies the management of various containers. It's open source project. Originally, it was developed by Google. And so for the container management, it gives you a, a lot of options. Like you can automate manual deployments. You can manage a group of containers. It has capabilities to self-monitor what's going on with the different containers. And it can scale. A horizontal scaling is built in. Okay, so first thing, uh, let's do, uh, let's go to this portal, just get started and deploy the AKS in Azure. So for this, you need uh, uh, an Azure subscription. Uh, if you do not have one, you can just sign up for a free account. Uh, once you are within your subscription, I'm already logged in. So for here, I can just search for AKS and it gives me the Kubernetes services. So now, the deployment a little bit more complex than many other deployments, but we're going to try to use a very simple and minimal configuration for this particular deployment. Okay, so over here you just click on add and just say add Kubernetes cluster. And the first page that we get, it's very similar to anything else. So for the resource group, what I'm going to say AKS, uh, say create new and then AKS test. Okay, so that is the resource group that I'm uh, gonna create. And uh, for the Kubernetes cluster name, let's try EBAKS, uh, that's available. I'm gonna deploy it in East US. And if you look at it, uh, availability zones, they are available. And so for the high availability, this is just built in, you just, everything is automatically selected so I'm just gonna go with the default and Kubernetes version I'm also gonna go with default I'm not gonna change anything uh, 1.17.11 at this time today this is the one that's default and I'm gonna go with it if you're watching at a different time if you have a different default you can choose that one most likely and you will still be able to do and follow what we are doing now over here, primary node pool. Here, what you see, it's gonna give you the node size, what kind of uh, containers it's gonna deploy. And node count, this one, the minimum count is three. Okay, the reason being one has to be uh, the, the master node and other two is gonna be the node that it's gonna, it's gonna manage. If you look at uh, one orchestrator, and two worker nodes. If you look at the AK term, that's how they are called. Uh, so, and other thing that we're gonna do while we are deploying, we're gonna create a service principle, and uh, our nodes are gonna run under this service principle. Okay, so let's go back over here. So in this one, you don't need to do anything else. So choose your subscription, uh, create a resource group, name your cluster, name choose your region, and then. Uh, you can change your size if you like. I'm going to go with the default one. Next, the node pool. If you look at the node pool, so the default one, minimum three node count, uh, standard DS2 V3, and it's deployed under uh, the three different availability zones. And the max pods is 110. I'm going to go with the default if you want. You can click on this one. And you can change things over here if you like. Okay, and You can increase your node count. Okay increase uh, change your max pods here is the limit 10 to 250 so i'm not going to change anything so i'm going to hit cancel over here 
if you want to add additional node pool you can also do that from here now if you want burstable scaling back by serverless azure container instances you can enable this one okay enable virtual nodes for this lab we are not going to do that um, and then if you have the availability zones chosen it will automatically use the virtual machine skill sets for the availability zones because you need horizontal scaling okay now click on next and go and come to the authorization tab here uh, you can go with the default it's going to create the service principle as i mentioned before and over here for this lab we do not need the role based access control so i'm just going to disable that one okay and uh, i'm going to stick to the rest uh, default options go to networking and over here you see you have two different networking options okay the kubernetes networking plugin creates a new virtual network for your cluster using default values this is a little bit simpler and i'm going to go with that one so if you look at it if i choose that one a lot of configuration is already taken care for me and if i go with the azure cni which is a network networking plugin that allows cluster to use a new or existing vnet with customizable addresses Okay, so a little bit more uh, configuration that you have, you have to do yourself and there should not be any overlapping subnets and stuff like that. Okay, so for this lab, I'm just going to go with the KubeNet. So that's the networking plugin that we are going to use for this lab. Uh, DNS prefix, you can choose the default one. Load balancer is already standard. We are not going to change anything. Uh, enable HTTP application routing. We don't need this for this lab, so I'm not gonna enable that one. For the security, if you need this, you can enable for this lab. Uh, we don't need it, so I'm just gonna go with the, all the default options in here and not enabling anything else. Uh, next, you come to the integration, uh, con container monitoring. Uh, you can enable that one and azure policy it's something new i think they have added recently if you have policies where you want to apply the policy at scale to enforce and safeguard the AKS cluster in a centralized consistent manner you can use this feature okay you can enable policy and you can define all the policies okay for this lab we don't need that one either now next tags tags they are not uh, mandatory but if you need to add some tags feel free to add some in here and then you just come to uh, the next tab and now it's running the final validation as soon as the validation is successful we are ready to deploy our kubernetes cluster so validation has been successful so i'm just going to hit create okay so that is going to create my kubernetes cluster Usually it takes maybe five to ten minutes to to deploy everything, and as soon as this is done, uh, we will look at the clusters, and, and it's that easy to to deploy a Kubernetes cluster within Azure from the portal. It's very easy. So while this is going on, let's take a look at our slides. If there's any notes that I made, all right. So once this is done then what we are going to do we are going to use the azure cli okay to to do some stuff okay so first of all uh, we're going to get the authentication get the credentials in our local environments we'll do it from the azure portal and then once the right context is set up then we'll look at what are the nodes we have that uh, we have deployed uh, with the deploy deployment that is going on. Okay, so uh, what we'll do, I'm just going to pause the video for a second. As soon as this deployment is done, we will restart. All right, everyone, uh, the deployment is now done. It really took about maybe five minutes to do it. And uh, you have this big blue button says go to resource i'm just going to click on it and this is going to give you some all the information really related to the kubernetes services that i have just deployed 
uh, it's again the resource group AKS test status succeeded is deployed in the East US here is the subscription name subscription ID Kubernetes version network type plugin we have used kubenet so it's showing up over here there's only one node pool and again some more uh, information over here how the networking is built you will find it over here uh, and you can go through and uh, take a look at some other stuff in here as well but what we're gonna do next is uh, we're gonna run some commands uh, the e, uh, from the bash shell not the partial the a, a CLI commands to take a look at the containers that are running within this uh, Kubernetes services right now. So to do that, uh, this is the command that I'm going to run. Okay, first of all, I need to get the credentials in my local environment. So I'm just going to copy this command. So the resource group is AKS test. Okay, if you have, if you're using a different resource group, in this command, change that one and the name of the Azure Kubernetes services, I have named it as ABAKS. So if you're using something else, change that one. Uh, but the real command is AZAKS get credentials. That's what you are, you are doing. So let's copy this one, come back over here and paste the command. And let's see if we can get, uh, so just say yes and yes okay so i was testing with another cluster with the same name uh, that's why it's giving me this uh these questions you may not get it if you're doing it for the first time so really you want to make sure that uh, you got a file which okay abaks or abaks and the context will be under home uh, be, it's going to create a folder name then under dot cube folder you have the config file okay so once this is there I have the credentials that are available in this environment and I can run our kubernetes commands within within this environment and talk to this particular kubernetes service okay so the next thing uh, for example we can write kubectl get nodes so let's do that kubectl get nodes and you would expect that you're going to have three nodes and all three of them should be up and running so let's uh, run the command and see what happens and as you see there are three uh, nodes because the minimum was three and uh, looks like they were deployed uh, about four minutes back and all of them are ready and uh, here is the version number okay so we're good up to that so we know that our deployment is successful and we can talk to our kubernetes cluster using the kuber cube cube ctl uh, commands okay so next what we need to do we need to deploy an application uh, within these nodes okay for this particular lab what i'm going to do i'm going to go and get this particular application from github okay and then uh, we're going to deploy that one and i'm going to give you this link so if you go there is an application under the azure sample apps okay as your voting app redis so if you go to this uh, site the only thing that we really need uh, is that yaml file so if you go and end up in this particular page you see that uh, there are two files in here uh, some folders and then as you vote all in one redis via ml and docker compose we're going to use this uh, docker compose file also later uh, in this lab for this part to, to deploy it only thing that you need is this so what you can do uh, you can just go to raw and just download this file uh, to your local folder there are many ways to download this i'm just saying uh, showing it one way and just save it in some place and I have already saved it uh, someplace in here. And the next thing that uh, you want to do, once you have downloaded this file, you come over here and using this little tiny icon, click on upload. And what I'll do, I'll go to downloads one more time, AKS. And this is the file that I have downloaded. 
and actually I have also uploaded so let's see yeah it says the upload is complete so you can just do that it will get that particular YAML file and it will store it over here so you can interact with the file okay so once <clears throat> this is done we can run this particular command kubectl apply dash f then the name of the file that you have just uploaded so just copy this one come back over here and paste and hit enter and look at that so this uh, it says it created the back end uh, it created the service back created and then front end the deployment created service is also created okay so this command didn't give us any any errors so it 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 created the things that I need to deploy this particular application <clears throat> so the next thing that we want to do we want to check the services okay so let's copy this command let's come back over here one more time and uh, run this particular command uh, here I make sure that k is small so delete small k and so this is giving you okay the service that's running uh, that we have deployed okay so the back end the front end and the kubernetes and if you look at it we when we go it's it's running behind a load balancer and the load balancer the front end is running behind a load balancer and the load balancer got an external IP address and that IP address is this and it's running on port 80 so let's just copy this particular IP address and come over here and since this is a public IP address, I would see the application running in here. And as we expected, this application is, is, is running up and running just fine. So that's how easy it is to deploy an application within <clears throat> uh, Azure uh, Kubernetes services. And this is like a sample voting application. So if you really like cats, and I like cats, so it's going to give the numbers over here. If you like dogs can click on that one and you can have a race <laughs> okay so the application is running uh, beautifully there is no problem so the next thing that we can do is locally so if you want to manage this kubernetes cluster that you have deployed uh, in azure and you want to maintain this locally uh, there is few things that you need to do uh, you need to install the Azure CLI locally and to do that you just go and uh, really you just just you know do a Google search as your CLI download okay so you will take you to uh, the Azure CLI and here based on whatever CLI you want uh, you can download the right uh, installed for Windows I'm using Windows today so I went to the Windows uh, install Azure CLI on Windows and I have performed uh, the installation so I'll, I would click on the current release and see it started downloading I don't need this file uh, because I already have this file downloaded so once you have that file you just click on it it's a simple uh, Windows installation and it will give you the Azure CLI installed okay so once you have that so what you need to do you need to install one more tool and that is called uh, the Azure AKS install CLI okay so you need to run this command uh, before you do that you can uh, log in so let's go back to the command window so this is the part that that uh, let me open up a brand new one yeah, so, so this is what I'm doing after I'm assuming that you have gone through and you have installed the Azure CLI in your machine no matter whether it's Windows Linux Mac you have installed it okay now I'm gonna do az login and hit enter and it should give me a new web page and it's asking pick an account I'm already logged in with, with this account so I'm gonna click on that one and say you have logged into the Microsoft Azure. So I'm gonna close this one, go back and see that it told me that you are now logged in 
now let us find all the subscription to which you have access and it's giving us uh, information about the subscription that I have access now in here again so you gotta run this particular command okay az aks install cli now I already have installed this so I don't really need to run this but you can run it use this command hit enter uh, it's not gonna do any harm for me it will just check and if it's installed most likely it's just gonna say it's you have already installed it one thing that's important in this one is make sure that you ha you are running this particular command whatever you get set the path to the Azure kubectl commands so later when you're gonna run the command you don't you, you, Windows knows that where all those commands are available okay so and I'm gonna give this uh, in my notes in my YouTube video as well so you run this and again change this you probably have a different username so whatever you get so use that one and set the path and again just as we did uh, we got the credential in our Azure CLI environment right over here so we ran this credential command before we did anything right so this is the AKS get credentials so we're gonna do the same thing over here as soon as this uh, command finishes it seems like it's still thinking uh, for something for some reason so I'm just gonna let it think for a, for a little bit and once this is done uh, we are going to get the credential in our local environment and once this is done there's another wonderful command it says az aks browse then resource group and the name you're providing the same thing over here as we provided in the previous command <clears throat> now instead of get credentials you're gonna 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 say browse and this is gonna give you a most wonderful dashboard from your local machine and you have the whole kubernetes kubernetes dashboard available for for you to use and play with and that that looks wonderful and we'll show that in a minute as soon as this command is done and looks like it is uh, so let's uh, run this command one more time to get all the credentials uh, make sure that you're already logged in okay and let's copy this command copy and over here I'm gonna paste it it's not pasting Here we go. So hit enter. And again, I since I did this previously, so it's asking if I'm going to rewrite. So just say why. You probably won't get this. Uh, so again, my my uh, credentials and everything is now saved in this particular file in my local machine this time. Okay. Previously, uh, my credentials were saved within the CLI environment. Okay. And again, that was under this particular uh, folder. And in my local machine, the machine that I'm using, a similar configuration file has been created. So the next thing, as I said, we're going to run this AKS browse command. So let's copy that one and come over here. And you can have issues with the case. So just type browse here. AKS V R O W S E and hit enter and see what happens. So again, it's uh, it knows and look at that. It's now opening up a new service from my local machine. So it's this is not an internet IP. So that's the local host, right? And over here to connect to the Kubernetes dashboard, you can either use a token or a cube config file. Since we are using the config, I'm just going to go and click on the config file. Click on the browse button. Go to my PC and it was stored under uh, my username. Uh, find your .cube file and config. I think that is what uh, it, it used. Let me make sure. Um, where is that got created? Okay, dot cube config, right? And we are under dot cube config. So that's the file you need to choose. So that will have all the information to give you access to our Kubernetes dashboard. And now hit sign in and look at that. So this is a most wonderful 
a view of your Kubernetes dashboard and what is going on with your backend and your front end. And again, this is the vote front end. And again, if you can click on this one, it will take you to the app which is running on the internet right now, really. So if you're watching, if I still keep this video or this uh, container running, you should be able to go there, type this address and be able to access the app but most likely you will not be because I'll probably destroy this whole resource group as soon as I'm done but uh, from the from this wonderful dashboard that you have you have so many different things so first of all your workload status your deployment status two containers running uh, pods how many pods running replica sets your deployment status okay how long they are running uh, workload so go through all those different features of your cluster cluster roles namespaces nodes all of that stuff you can go through it and, and spend some time kind of getting used to this whole dashboard and how uh, it can help you uh, managing your containers and applications okay so that's uh, uh, we have done uh, we have done uh, uh, connecting to the Kubernetes dashboard from our local environment using uh, Azure CLI installed within this local environment. The <clears throat> next thing that we want to do is run even the containers locally. Now in this one, uh, I'm going to skip some, I'm really not going to skip some tests. The only requirement for this one, you, you got to have the Docker installed. Uh, I'm using Windows today, so again, I went to this particular link where you are just search for, you know, install Docker. And if you're using uh, Linux or Mac, just follow whatever instruction just should be available pretty uh, easily. Uh, and uh, just what I all I did download the Docker from Docker Hub. Okay, it's gonna give me a file to download. So get stable version. So I already got it. So I have already gone through the installation. Before you do the installation, make sure that you have the virtualization enabled. And to check for the virtualization enabled or not, you can do Control Shift and then Escape. Okay, this is gonna give you the task manager. In the task manager. It's somewhere in here, yeah. Uh, if you go under the performance, go to virtualization, it's gonna tell you whether the virtualization is enabled or not. If it's disabled by default, you can restart your computer. And most of the time you can hit F2 key, depending, like you just want to go to your BIOS setting. Different computers, they may have a different function key. But just go to the BIOS setting and usually the virtualization, you may have a different tab or it could be under security as well. So just go through the manual, make sure your virtualization is enabled. Once it's enabled, uh, install the Docker. Okay, so once you have Docker uh, installed, like I have my uh, Docker installed in here. So what we can do, uh, we can uh we can come back and open up another command window okay and uh we are going to download the whole uh, application now okay and we uh, i have also git installed if you have git installed you can use the git to clone if you don't have git you can just download the whole zip file uh and i'll let's go to this application first so this is a uh, application so you can download the code, okay, download the zip file, or I, or you can clone it. So I have already cloned this application, okay. So the command that you need to run, so all I did is, let's come over here, cd downloads, okay. So then cd, I created a folder aks, and if I do a dir, you see that this is the folder as your voting app it is this folder and the command that you need to run git clone git clone and then you paste the link from the application so you copy this one come over here and paste it so if you click on it uh, it says already exists right so i don't i don't i don't need to do that anymore so once you do that, it will download this folder. 
and now you can get inside the folder Azure so again if you do a DIR on it so you will see that there is the docker compose uh, YML file is there and that file has all the instructions about how to deploy this file in your local machine so if you look at uh, the docker compose it's a very simple file and the main thing that I want you to look at is the port that it's using for the front end okay for the front end the port will be mapped port 8080 is going to be mapped to port 80 so uh, with that uh, what we'll do we'll write a command and that's a compose docker compose that will build the image and it will deploy so let's come back over here the, so it's very simple command docker compose up so go inside this particular uh, folder and run docker test compose and then up okay and this one uh, is going to I have already done this so it, if you're doing for the first time okay it's going to download all the images it will take some time and once the images are done downloading okay you will see this particular uh, uh, output that everything is up and running properly okay so once this is done uh, you can now go to your local machine local host and then you can provide the port that we looked at and hit enter and here you have a particular voting application okay that's also running inside your local machine okay so this if you're familiar with docker this part is probably uh, you already know how to do that so that's about it that I wanted to cover in this lab uh, just take, take your time to go through and do all of that and spend more time with uh, the deployment of the Kubernetes cluster and uh, just go through all those different different tabs that you have over here just be familiar with it uh, I will I would probably do more videos where I'll look into the different tabs in more details but for this one uh, I wanted to keep this video small and still I wanted to give you something so that you guys can get started quickly and have something working up and running you can play with it uh, and just be familiar and feel good that you have accomplished something in terms of deployment okay with that if you're studying for that uh, as your exam certification exams uh, good luck uh, this is definitely covered in multiple certifications so just spend spend your time be familiar uh, if you like the video please subscribe give me a thumbs up and also if you have any comments please uh, write it down uh, so that I can make better videos next time thank you for watching have a great day